Hey everyone, it's Mostly Casual Commander, I'm BK. You can join us on Discord or Patreon if you're into that kind of thing. Busterkin's won the die roll and he's playing Ixel, Scion of Atraxa. He's working on them poison counters. What a guy. J-Man's making squirrels with Chatterfang at the helm. It's pretty much a squirrel tribal deck with a token strategy. Makes sense. Scott brought his Celestine the Living Saint deck out for a spin. It's a life gain plan with things that reward him for gaining life. And Kyle is playing Will Help, the Rock Cleaver, Zombie Tribal, Value Engine, Token Production, what's not to like? Stick around to the end to see my fat cat meatball. Also subscribe, that'd be really cool. Busterkins kicks things off with a Necroblossom Snarl as his land for turn before passing to J-Man, who plays a forest so that his squirrels have a place to live. On Scott's turn, he plays a Plains and follows that up by casting Speaker of the Heavens, a vigilancy, lifelinky thing that can make angels later. On Kyle's turn, he cracks a Fabled Passage, finding an island before passing the turn to Busterkins. He drew and plays Canopy Vista, entering the battlefield tapped, he passes it right back over to J-Man, who plays a secret layer drop mana confluence looking kind of like Power Rangers, which is cool. He passes back over to Scott. He drops another planes. Scott then moves into the red zone with his Speaker of the Heavens, hitting Kyle for one and gaining one point of life. And as a follow-up, he casts Dranith Magistrate, stranding everybody's commanders in their command zone. I think everybody really likes that. On Kyle's turn, he plays a Swamp into a Sky Diamond, entering the battlefield tapped, of course. On Busterkin's turn, he plays a Swamp and stares daggers at Dranith Magistrate. Mortify. Hey, uh, politely. <laughs> so, thank you, feel dumb. Looks like Busterkins does the table a favor before passing the turn to J-Man, who plays Undergrowth Stadium as his land for turn. And then he pings himself one to cast his commander, Chatterfang, Squirrel General. This thing can make squirrels and pump slash shrink things. On Scott's turn, he plays Nykthos, Shrine to Nyx. In theory, that thing can generate a bunch of manas. He casts Angel of Vitality. So now if he would gain life, he gets more. He moves into combat at Busterkins, pinging him for one, but Scott gets two life from that. What? On to Kyle's turn, he drops another swamp, and then he casts Commander Sphere. Kyle's the only one with ramp at this point. That's uh, probably good for him. On to Busterkins turn four, he plays a forest, and then he casts Infectious Inquiry. So he'll draw two cards, lose two life, and give everybody a poison counter. That's what his deck wants to do, you see. Once a player has 10 poison counters, they're dead. And uh, yeah, that's his game plan. On J-Man's turn, he plays a forest and casts Cryptolith Rite. So now all of his creatures can tap for mana. That's probably good. He passes to Scott, who plays another Plains as his land for turn, and then he casts the Book of Exalted Deeds. So this thing can start cranking out some angels if he gains life, which I imagine he's gonna do. Speaker of the Heaven again hits the red zone, pinging Busterkins and gaining Scott a couple more points of life before passing back to Kyle. He plays his commander, Wilhelt, the Rot Cleaver. Commanders that say draw cards in the command zone are probably pretty dece. I don't know, I like drawing cards. He casts Crypt Breaker before passing the turn back over to Busterkins. He casts Evolution Sage, so whenever a land ETBs, he'll proliferate. And guess what? There's a land. Sand Steep Citadel. So that will trigger his Evolution Sage, so he'll give all of his opponents another poison counter. He passes the turn over to J-Man, who plays another forest. He taps all of his lands to cast Deranged Hermit, getting a fistful of squirrels alongside. And because of Chatterfang, he'll get an additional squirrel. That's nice. And so long as Deranged Hermit is out, those squirrels will get plus one, plus one. On Scott's turn, he activates Nykthos, Shrine to Nyx. So he'll generate five manas and then cast his commander, Celestine the Living Saint. She reanimates stuff. Then he casts Children of Corliss. And when he sacrifices that, he can gain a bunch of life equal to what he lost that turn. That's probably good. He moves to combat at Busterkins, dropping down to 32 before passing back to Kyle. Kyle plays Fleshbag Marauder, so everyone's gonna have to sack a creature. But with that ability on the stack, Kyle uses Crypt Breaker's activated ability, tapping three untapped zombies, losing life, and drawing a card before sacrificing Fleshbag Marauder to its own ability. He'll also gain a 2-2 Decayed Zombie thanks to Will Help. Scott sacked his Children of Corliss, Busterkins lost his Evolution Sage, and J-Man lost his Squirrel. On Kyle's end step, Will Help triggers, he sacrifices the Decayed Zombie, drawing another card. On Busterkins' turn, he plays Myriad Landscape, entering the battlefield tapped, then he casts Expand the Sphere, so he gets to look at the top six cards of his library, and then he could choose whether or not to play up to two lands, otherwise he'll proliferate. In this case, he proliferates twice. 
With his opponents at four poison each, he passes the turn. On J-Man's upkeep, he satisfies the echo cost of Deranged Hermit. Then he draws and plays a forest as his land for turn. Then he casts Squirrel Sovereign, pumping the squirrel team a little bit more. Yeah, I don't think anybody really likes Busterkin's poison plan. So um, J-Man attacks him, smacking into him for five commander damage. Before passing the turn, back over to Scott. He plays another Plains. He activates Nykthos again, generating six white mana. He uses three of it for Oketra's Monument, reducing costs, generating tokens. Then he casts Nykthos Paragon with his remaining lands and floating manas. Paragon says, yo, we'll put a bunch of plus one, plus one counters on it when you gain life. And he's going to do a lot of that. But before combat damage is dealt, Kyle casts Deadly Rollick on Nykthos Paragon, which is probably smart. So that exiles Nykthos Paragon, so he can't even be reanimated by Celestine. That's, that's good for the table. Busterkins takes his beat, Scott gains some life. Now he can activate Speaker of the Heavens to make a 4-4 flying angle. He moves into his end step, and Celestine and the Book of Exalted Deeds will both trigger. So first he gets Dranith Magistrate back, thanks to Celestine, and he'll produce a 3-3 flying angle, thanks to the Book of Exalted Deeds. He passes the turn over to Kyle, who plays an island. Then he casts Liliana, Death's Majesty. She's a token factory, a reanimate thing, and a board wipe, all in one. He activates her plus one, getting a 2-2, and then he mills the top two cards of his library into the bin. Then he activates Cryptbreaker, now that he has three untapped zombies. He pings himself, drawing another card, moves to end step, sacrifices the newly made 2-2, and gets a decayed 2-2, which is not nearly as new, it's, it's, it's rotting is what it is. Busterkins plays Vorninclex, monstrous raider on his turn, which is terrifying. He'll start slinging out even more counters than he was before. On the J-Man's turn, he plays Sad Robot, Solemn Simulacrum. He'll go find a land, entering the battlefield tapped. In this case, it's a swamp. And then when that thing dies, he could draw a card. That's cool. He moves Chatterfang into the red zone, and thanks to Forest Walk, Busterkins just has to take his beats. And then J-Man passes the turn back over to Scott, who plays Righteous Valkyrie. This thing can start gaining him some extra life, and it's also an anthem effect on a stick. He gets another warrior token, thanks to Oketra's Monument. And then he lines up his attacks, sharing some love, and attacking each one of his opponents. Each one of them takes their beats, largely because all of his attacking creatures have flying, and there's nothing his opponents can do about it. He goes up to 62, he activates his Speaker of the Heavens, and gets another flying 4-4 angle. This'll trigger Righteous Valkyrie, giving him even more life. Then on his end step, again, the Book of Exalted Deeds triggers, getting him a 3-3 angel, and Celestine brings back Children of Corliss, again triggering Righteous Valkyrie and giving him even more life, both times. So he goes up to a respectable 79 before passing the turn to Kyle. Kyle plays an island and then activates Liliana, adding another 2-2 zombie to his board and milling himself two more cards. With no good attacks, he goes to end step triggering Wilhelt, killing his decayed zombie and drawing a card. He passes the turn over to Busterkins who draws. He plays Geth's Summons, which can return something from his graveyard to the battlefield, as well as each opponent who has three or more poison counters. But unfortunately for Busterkins, Kyle is the only other player that has cards in his bin at this point. So not maximum value from Geth Summons, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Busterkins got his Evolution Sage and the Fleshbag Marauder from Kyle, and with Fleshbag's trigger on the stack, J-Man casts Beast Within on Vorninclex. In response, Busterkins casts Infectious Bite, targeting Vorninclex and Righteous Valkyrie. So Vorninclex beats up on Righteous Valkyrie, and then he proliferates. And because Vorninclex is on the battlefield when that spell resolves, everybody will get an additional poison counter. So they all have six. Beast Within resolves, giving Busterkins a 3-3, but he'll just sacrifice the 3-3 to Fleshbag's trigger anyway, so he doesn't bother putting it on the battlefield. Kyle sacks a 2-2 healthy zombie to get a 2-2 decayed zombie. Scott sacked a warrior token, and J-Man sacked Sad Robot, drawing a card. Then Busterkins drops Temple Garden, triggering Evolution Sage, giving another poison counter to everybody. So they're all at 7. On to J-Man's turn, he plays Demonic Tutor. So he goes and finds the best possible card in his deck. I don't know what it was exactly, but I do know it was not Croson Beast, which he casts next. It's a squirrely beast with super cool artwork from a secret layer drop. He moves to combat at Busterkins, attacking with three of his squirrels, so he separates them out there, as well as Chatterfang. Busterkins eats two of the squirrels with his creatures before dying, unfortunately. Sorry, Busterkins. On second main phase, J-Man casts Chatterstorm, where now the storm count equals three. So there's three instances of Chatterstorm, so each one of them generates a squirrel, which is then replaced by Chatterfang. So there's six total squirrels. 
squirrel tokens now. He played a forest before passing the turn over to Scott. On Scott's turn, he activates Nykthos again, doing work. And with his seemingly endless supply of mana, he casts Solemn Simulacrum, giving him another planes on the battlefield, as well as a 1-1 warrior token. Scott, now fearing J-Man, moves to combat, but before damage is dealt, J-Man starts activating Chatterfang, so he starts sacrificing his squirrels and paying a black mana to shrink down Angel of Vitality, and then he does it one more time to shrink down Celestine, so J-Man spares himself some life loss and drops down to 16. In Scott's second main phase, he again activates his Speaker of the Heavens, getting another 4-4 Angel. And then he moves to his end step, whereby Kyle activates his Crypt Breaker, pinging himself and drawing a card, and then casting a Cyclonic Rift on Overload. What? So unfortunately for Scott and J-Man, they will have to pick up all of their non-land permanents, and Kyle gets to, of course, keep his. Onto his turn, he plays an Island, and then he casts Sadisi, Undead Vizier. He'll have that enter the battlefield and exploit itself. This will trigger Wilhelt, giving him a 2-2 Decayed Zombie. Then he goes tutoring. So he intends to use Liliana's reanimation ability to just do the same play again. So in order to save time, we just have him go ahead and execute that play now while he's already tutoring. So he'll just grab two cards instead of one. Just a little shortcut to save some time. So Wilhelt makes another 2-2 Decayed Zombie before Kyle casts Phyrexian Altar. So now he can start sacrificing stuff and gaining any colored mana that he wants. So he starts sacrificing all of his zombies and generating blue mana. Sack Crypt Breaker for a zombie. Sacrifice a decayed zombie, we're up to five. Sacrifice Will Halt, making a decayed zombie. With his own trigger, we're up to six. Rooftop Storm. Yep. And Grave Crawler. Yep. So infinite mana. Yep. Yep. So I also have a uh, Diagraphed Captain in my in my hand. Drain so I'm just going to drain us. Yeah. Cool. With Diagraph Captain, he can infinitely loop Gravecrawler, thanks to Frexian Altar and Rooftop Storm, and drain his opponents to death, which will make him the winner. Congratulations, Kyle. Nice combo finisher after an interesting game. And here's Meatball. Well, there you have it. That's the game. Seemed like everybody's deck did pretty much what it wanted to do in that game. I feel like that's what makes a game of Commander good. So let us know what you thought about the game in the comments. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, thank you for watching.